Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, a prophetic segment of our broadcast once again. And uh, friends, we are seeing yet again another stage marker for prophecy to be fulfilled in the very near coming future there. Uh, an article here today that came out on Arut Shiva. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice a little bit here. Uh, Iraq urges Turkey to immediately withdraw troops. You heard me right there. That is Iraq threatening Turkey now. <clears throat> Baghdad demanded Saturday the immediate withdrawal of forces it said Turkey illegally deployed in Iraq, which is struggling to assert its sovereignty while receiving foreign assistance against ISIS. Uh, <clears throat> which is funny because it's Iraq that... Russia says it is actually backing ISIS. Uh, AFP reports that senior officer from the Kurdish forces in the region, which are allied to Ankara, that's Turkey, downplayed the deployment as a routine training rotation, but Turkish paper said it was part of a deal to set up a permanent base. <clears throat> that's not going to go over very well. But then again, I'm sure that the Iraqis, since the United States uh, toppled the country a few years back in their war there, uh, is going to push for the Iraqis to accept this Turkish base. But anyway, let's go on with the article. It says the Turkish troops, tanks, and artillery were sent to Nineveh, a northern province largely held by ISIS in an area currently controlled by Kurdish forces, but also claimed by Baghdad. Now, Nineveh, by the way, friends, is on the, uh, on the western side of the country of Iraq. It is a Kurdish stronghold in the region there, uh, but it is part of the country of Iraq. And uh, <clears throat> to see that Turkey is actually wanting to set up a base there, and also in light of the fact that Russia is not very happy with the Turks and says that they're very complicit with the terrorist groups in the country of Syria. And now that we see that the Turks are going to set up a base in Nineveh inside of Iraq, I am sure that that's not going to go over very well with Russia either. It'll be like a lead balloon to say the very least. And no doubt that may be one of the places Russia attacks in order to put down the Turks when the time comes that Russia Russia repays Turkey for what it's doing. <clears throat> anyway, let's continue on. Facing a major political pressure as a result of the statements by American officials, Iraqi Prime Minister Hadir al-Abadi has taken an increasingly hard public line in foreign forces in Iraq over the past week, uh, terming the deployment of ground combat forces as a hostile act. The Iraqi authorities call on Turkey to immediately withdraw from the Iraqi territory. A statement from his office said, We have confirmation that Turkish forces, forces numbering about one armored regiment with a number of tanks and artillery entered in Iraqi territory allegedly to train Iraqi groups without a request of authorization from Iraqi federal authorities, it said. The deployment is considered a serious violation of Iraqi sovereignty, it added. Major General Nard Nardini Harki, com the commander of Kurdish uh, Pish uh, Pishmerga forces in the area, said the new arrived Turkish troops were a part of the routine rotation and training program accompanied by protection force that has since returned to Turkey. Before some time, a number of Turkish officers arrived to train Hashdat Awadni forces in the Zakan base, Herky said in the statement referring to volunteer anti-ISIS fighters. Another team arrived at the camp to replace the previous teams. The mission of the new force that came was only to protect the trainers and return the previous team to Turkey, he said. Now you got to keep in mind, Russia already knows that the Kurds are involved in the triangle of the illegal oil smuggling from Syria. And so therefore, the, Tur the Kurds are definitely are going to be implicated in this with Turkey. This is why the Turks have soldiers there in Nineveh. But what people don't understand is that there is a biblical prophecy in Zephaniah that speaks of Nineveh about modern day Nineveh and what's going to happen. Of course, this Nineveh is the same Nineveh 
that God spared when the whole city repented during the time of Jonah. Kind of interesting, Jonah never did say to the city, go out and kill some red heifers and stuff to get repentance. They just had to repent before God. God said to Jonah, tell them if they don't repent, I'm going to destroy the city within 30 days, I believe it was, or 40 days. And they did. The king repented in sackcloth and in ashes. But today, Nineveh is about to be a desolation right along with Syria. Let's take a look at the prophecy here in Zephaniah. Let me take you real quick to chapter uh, 2, verse 1. We'll read to 1 to 3 here to get a kind of an idea of the time frame. And friends, I'm going to have to bring you back here to Zephaniah chapter 2. This deals with everything that's happening right here at the end. Let's take a look. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O shameless nation, before the decree bring forth the day when one passeth the chaff, as the chaff before the fierce anger of the Lord come upon you before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. So when is this going to happen? When God's anger comes upon this earth, okay? Seek ye the Lord, all you humble, or actually it's written the meek. Seek ye the Lord, all you meek of the earth that have executed his ordinance, Praise be to God, his commandments, that is. Seek ye righteousness, seek humility. It may be you shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Remember what Yeshua said on the mount uh, when he gave the, the sermon on the mount there around Galilee. Uh, the, and he says there that the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek, that is. If you looked at that in the, in the lost gospel, he actually says the meek that keep the humane law, they shall inherit the earth there. Well, this is the ones that he's talking about hiding in the day of his anger. Uh, and he's telling them to seek ye the Lord, you meek of the earth that have executed his ordinance and have kept his commandments. Praise God, this is exciting to me. Now, because then he goes into all kinds of things that are happening. Gaza is forsaken. You see, Gaza is there to attack Israel, and it's true. Gaza can never really get the Palestinians behind them. Hezbollah really doesn't want to get behind Gaza. All, they'll get behind the Palestinians there. Mahmoud Abbas, all the Arab nations will. But they do kind of leave Gaza out by itself and don't really care what happens to the people in Gaza. So that is true, all right? Ashkelon is a desolation. But did you know that God said about Ashkelon that the remnant of Judah that will end up believing that Yeshua is the Messiah will be living in the coastal city of Ashkelon. Imagine that. That's something that is certainly to be thought about. Let's move on down though quickly for this news broadcast. I don't have enough voice to stay longer, but let's go to verse 10 here. Uh, and God says here, let's see, let me, is it verse 10 or do we back up to verse 9? Let me try verse 9 here. Um, uh, wait a minute. No, 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 no. It is further down. And my apology there. Um, <clears throat> yes, it is further down here. Let me get down. I think it's around verse 14, 15 there. Um, I see here. Just bear with me, friends, here. Let me, let me just look at it real fast here that I had marked here. It's actually in verse 13. That's where it's at. All right, let me jump back here to the Hebrew version of this, Hebrew English. And he says right here, uh, <clears throat> excuse me here, he says, the yet yadu, see, and he will stretch out his hand. See, Yado, his hand, all right, against the north and destroy Syria or Assyria, as we see here, and will make Nineveh a desolation and dry like the wilderness. See, the time that God is about ready to, to do what most Christians call a rapture, in other words, pray that you be found worthy to be hidden in this day of God's anger. He's also at that time, we see what's going to happen on the earth. And a key sign right here for us is, we already know that Damascus will be a ruinous heap, as the Bible says. We know that Syria becomes a nation, according to Micah chapter 7, that will be with, basically become desolate without inhabitants because of 
their own doing, as the Bible says, just paraphrasing that, we've already seen that come to pass. The refugees have left the country of Syria. They're in, they're in the United States now. They're in Europe now. They're in Turkey now. They're in Saudi Arabia. They have fled the country. And now it's being totally decimated by war with Russia, NATO and their allies. Germany's joined in. The UK's joined into this. Uh, and, and of course, the United States and, and, and the European allies and Turkey, they're all back in the ISIS or the quote-unquote moderate forces there against uh, Basr al-Assad. You know, Basr al-Assad really should just pack up and go home. He should just go back to the United Kingdom there where he got his doctorate degree and where he married his wife at because there's not going to be any more Syria before long. We're talking about Bible prophecies that are coming to pass before your eyes. And now we see that when Assyria is being destroyed, he says, I will make Nineveh a desolation. You see, when God prophesies these things, God doesn't have to do the work. The, God knows that the evil of man is going to destroy himself, but he prophesies it through his prophets to let you know what's going to happen in advance. So Nineveh is about to become a desolation, and we can see why. According to the article in Israel National News, they clearly are stating that the Iraqis are demanding the Turks get out of their country. The Turks are saying they're setting up a permanent base. The Kurds say, no, they're not. Russia says that the, Turkey, the Turkish are there to back uh, ISIS and their, and their thugs all around the Syrian border there. We know that there's this triangle of illegal smuggling oil selling it to $15 to $18 a barrel. Of course, they say Israel is getting the majority of it. See, they're trying to get it all blamed on the Jews again so they can attack the Jews. You know where the majority of it's really going? It's going to the NATO members in Europe. It's Germany. It's not only Germany, it's France. No wonder why they're involved in attacking these countries now to make it look good. Well, we didn't really buy the oil. Yes, you did. And you made a lot of billions of dollars for your wealthy people, while the people that are buying your gas at the pump is not saving any money whatsoever, especially in Europe. I don't know about the United States. I hear you had a little bit of drop in prices. Maybe they decided to be kind enough to pass a little bit of the savings on to you, but still, they still made billions. You can count on that. But anyway, Nineveh is going to be a desolation. And I guarantee you, Russia has already said, uh, President Putin made it quite clear he said, if you think sanctions is the only thing we're going to do in response for shooting down and killing our pilot, he said, you are sadly mistaken. He said that to Turkey. So I can count, you can count on one thing. Russia knows Turkey's got that base there over there in Iraq, and it's going to be open season very soon. God's going to fulfill prophecy. And who knows, maybe Russia is playing a big part in God fulfilling some of these prophecies here in the Middle East. We do see that they're helping to bring down Syria single-handedly as they bomb the country, wiping out ISIS. They're taking out everything in its path right along with it. And it's just a matter of time, friends. Prophecy is being fulfilled, and I am so excited to be living in this time and seeing it. The two witnesses coming on the scene. That news broadcast we did yesterday, YouTube is trying to suppress the views. You know, it's at the same amount of views this evening as it was after only eight hours of airing, and now it's been nearly 24 hours. And there's over 300 and something ups. There's over 100 comments. When we have that type of ups and we have that type of comments, friends, these videos are already hit 8, 10,000. I guess we said something they didn't like, that their climate control was actually being set in motion in order to try to stop the two witnesses. Because you can count on one thing, like Obama said, if suddenly we get five, six, seven feet of the sea level rising, we got a problem. If all of a sudden, suddenly, these breadbasket belts that are on the earth suddenly can't produce anymore, we got a problem. And he likens it into terrorism. Well, you know what? They do know. The Pope Francis knows that the two witnesses are coming. Of course, they have their own little idea that Jesus and Mother Mary are the two witnesses. I saw the website someone shared here in our comment section there. I, I think I approved it so you guys can get it, give you a good laugh anyway. But uh, no, the true two witnesses, the Pope knows there are two coming and they know very good and well it's not going to be church at all and it's not going to be very pleasant. 
they know what's coming and they know that the, their number will be up as well. Satan knows he has a little time. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you for standing with us. Support this news broadcast. We need your help to keep this going. We're going to step it up a notch. God bless you. Thank you. You can go to IsraeliNewsLive.org and you can contribute there. We love you. Shalom.